Hello and welcome to CET 4884 Security Methods and Practice. In this session, we will address the organization or business need for information security. We will also discuss the threats posed to information security and uh, the more common attacks associated with those threats. We will be able to differentiate threats to uh, information security or information system from attacks against uh, information systems. The main goal of securing information is to protect system contents. If the system stays stable with no threats, then the organization can focus on improving systems that support the information resulting efficiency, ease of use, and ease of access to useful information. Unfortunately, that's not the case since we have attacks on daily basis that we have to deal with in addition to information support. Securing information is a business need that assists the organization for uh, functioning or to function properly. Uh, security protects data that has been collected and used by the organization. Many organizations realize that one of their most valuable assets in the, uh, is the, their data. Without data, an organization loses its record of uh, transactions and or its ability to deliver value to its customers. Uh, protecting data in motion and data at rest are both critical aspects of information security. An effective information security program is essential to uh, the protection of the integrity and value of the organization's data. Security protects the organization's technology asset from uh, damage and loss. The modern organization needs to create an environment that safeguards applications using the organization's IT systems, particularly the environment of the organization's infrastructure. Once the infrastructure is in place, Management must understand it has not abandoned the infrastructure and delegated all the work to the IT department. It is the management's responsibility to make choices and enforce decisions, uh, but must continue to oversee the infrastructure. To perform effectively, organizations must add secure infrastructure services based on the size and scope of the enterprise. When an organization grows and more capabilities are needed, additional security services may have to be provided. As the organization grows, the network grows to accommodate changing needs based on that additional robust technology uh, solutions uh, may be needed uh, to replace security programs the organizational has outgrown. Today's interconnected, interdependent, wirelessly networked business environment are exposed to untrusted objects over the network. The smaller, faster, cheaper computers and uh, storage devices decrease the skills necessary to be a computer hacker. In addition, there are many attacks or many attack tools that are available with uh, low cost or even for free for these hackers to use. To make the proper decisions related to the organization's information security and to create policies and enforce them, management must understand and be informed of the various kinds of threats. As we stated in the previous session, a threat is an object, person, or other entity that represents a constant danger to an asset. The corporate LAN can face threats from outside the organization or from the inside. For the external threats, such as uh, internet threats, which includes uh, viruses, uh, malware, uh, worms, um, spyware, and other similar threats, and uh, then we have something called denial of service, uh, we have unauthorized users, uh, we have the hackers over the internet, and this is one external issue that the company has to deal with. The other issue is the 
natural disasters like floods, storms, like hurricanes, and other uh, disasters, uh, mudslides, uh, uh, earthquakes. All these are uh, considered natural or um, uh, uh, like God made disasters that will affect the company or the organization infrastructure. There are also other things that mean man-made disasters and the man-made disaster could be like a fire, power outage and other accidents. The internal threats can be as a result of uh, employee practice and errors. Uh, it could be systems failure of uh, protection or information leakage or installing unauthorized software. It could be hardware threats such as theft or unauthorized access. Uh, other internal threats from uh, consulting or contracting jobs. If you have a contractor that had a, a contract with the organization and uh, they have access to the information, uh, they can copy uh, unauthorized information and that's a threat for the organization. So in general, we can identify five uh, categories of threats, whether external or internal. We can say that we have uh, some of these are unintentional acts, errors, human errors, or unintentional. Um, uh, others are natural disasters. Uh, some of them are technical failures with a software or hardware. Uh, we have management failures and we have deliberate acts. So we will go over these threats as we go. For the unintentional acts such as human errors, which could include uh, shoulder surfing, uh, which is explained in the next slide, the carelessness with laptops and portable computing devices that hold companies' information, also explained in a later slide, uh, opening a questionable email uh, from a spam source, which uh, might be phishing for personal information, and uh, we will address the concept of phishing later on, um, careless internet surfing opening suspicious web pages which might allow spyware to be installed uh, on the company's computer uh, poor password selection and use which might allow some hackers to crack the password and penetrate the organization network other unintentional acts could include or could be related to environmental hazards such as dirt dust and humidity Employees constitute one of the greatest threats to information security as the individuals closest to uh, the organization data. They deal with data on a daily basis. So employee mistakes can easily lead to the following uh, uh, stuff or following issues. First of all, revelation of classified data. Second, maybe they can enter uh, wrong data, erroneous of data. They can accidentally delete or modify data. They can store or uh, use the storage of data in unprotected areas. And they can fail to protect information. Most of these mistakes or errors are due to inexperienced employees or improper training or making incorrect assumptions. Many threats can be prevented with controls ranging from simple procedures such as providing proper training and verifying activities by a second party. This is an example of shoulder surfing which occurs when the attacker watches another person's computer screen over that person's shoulder. Particularly dangerous in public areas such as airports, commuter trains and on airplanes. The company's employees' carelessness with laptops and portable computing uh, devices that hold the company information is very common. In fact, the most dangerous employees are those in human resources and management information system. The human resource employees have access to sensitive personal data on all employees. The management information system employees not only have access to sensitive personal data but control the means to create, store, transmit and modify these data. So always 
uh, the company employees has to be very very uh, uh, cautious on uh, what they do with their laptops uh, and for the password and protection for uh, the portable devices that they have the uh, one of the uh, things that will uh, affect uh, or uh, create a threat on a company is the deliberate software attacks occur when an individual or a group designs software to attack uh, an unsuspecting system. So if the system is not suspecting any attacks, then you will see some of the attacks happening. Most of this software is referred to as malicious code or malicious software or sometimes malware. These software components or programs are designed to damage, destroy, or deny service to the target systems. Some of the more, more common or the most common instances of malicious code are viruses and worms, Trojan horses, logic bombs, backdoors, and denial of service attacks. Computer viruses are segments of code that perform malicious actions. This code behaves very much like a virus, uh, but again, attacking animals and planets, plants. Using the cell's uh, own replication uh, uh, machinery uh, to uh, propagate and attack. So it's the same as the one that comes to animals, plants, or uh, humans. Now the code uh, attaches itself to the existing program and takes control of that program's access to the targeted computer. Then the virus controlled target uh, program then carries out the virus plan by replicating itself into additional targeted system. The Macro virus is embedded in the automatically executing macros or macro code. And that is common in office productivity software like word processor, spreadsheets, and database applications. The boot virus infects the key operating system files located or uh, the, the uh, system files or operating file located in a computer's boot sector. Worms are considered as malicious programs that replicate themselves constantly without requiring another program to provide a safe environment for replicating. Worms can continue replacing themselves until they completely fill available resources such as memory, hard drive, space, and network bandwidth. Trojan horses uh, software programs that hide their uh, true nature and reveal their designed behavior only when activated. Trojan horses are frequently uh, dis uh, distinguished or uh, dis uh, disguised as um, helpful, uh, interesting, or necessary pieces of software, such as readme.exe file. Uh, often includes the, uh, this is included with uh, the shareware or freeware uh, packages. Uh, backdoor or trapdoor uh, is a virus or a worm uh, that can have uh, a playload that installs a backdoor or trapdoor component in a system. This allows the attacker to access the system at um, uh, his own time with special privileges. The polymorphism is a threat that changes its apparent uh, shape over time, representing a new threat not detectable by techniques that are looking for a pre-configured signature. These threats actually evolve changing their size and appearance to elude detection by antivirus software programs, making detection more of a challenge. Virus, uh, virus and worm hoaxes 
uh, as frustrating as viruses and worms are perhaps more time and money uh, consuming. There are lots of money spent uh, on resolving virus hoax. Well-meaning people spread the virus and worms when they send email warning of fictitious or vi uh, virus uh, threats. Most attacks on companies are related to intellectual property or intellectual properties that uh, the company uh, have developed as part of their business operations. Uh, when we say intellectual property, uh, we can define it as the ownership of ideas and control uh, over the tangible uh, or uh, virtual representation of those ideas. Intellectual property for an organization includes trade secrets, uh, copyrights, trademarks, and patents. Once intellectual property has been defined and uh, properly identified, breaches to the intellectual property constitute a, a threat to the security of this information. Most common intellectual property breaches involve the lawful, unlawful use or duplication of software-based intellectual property known as software piracy. There are many laws that uh, will impose penalties on software piracy. In addition, uh, there are two watchdog organizations investigate uh, the uh, allegation of software abuse. The first company is called Software and Information uh, Industry Association, uh, which was formerly uh, called the Software uh, Publishers Association. And the second company is the Business Software Alliance. Enforcement of copyright violations and piracy has been attempted through a number of technical security mechanisms, including digital watermarks and embedded codes. As a result to any attack on the company's information or breach into the system, uh, products and or services are not delivered to customers as expected or uh, what we can call as a potential deviation uh, in quality of service uh, by the service provider. Uh, this category represents situations in which and uh, the, the organization information system depends on the successful operation of many independent support systems, including uh, power grids, telecommunication networks, uh, parts suppliers, service vendors, and even the uh, janitorial staff and garbage haulers. Internet service, communications, and power irregularities are three set of service issues that dramatically affect the availability of information and systems. For the internet services issues, we know, everybody knows that without internet now the organization will not be able to run. So for organizations that rely heavily on the internet and the web to support continued operations, the threat of uh, the potential loss of internet service can lead to considerable loss in the availability of information. Many organizations have sales staff and telecommuters working at remote locations. When uh, uh, an organization places its web services in the care of a web hosting provider, uh, that outsourcer uh, assumes the responsibility or uh, should take the responsibility for all internet services as well as for the hardware and operating system software used to operate the website. At that point, if it's outsourced to uh, uh, another company that will host the website, then maybe the company will rely on the hosting company to uh, take care of all uh, these issues, including security, hardware, software uh, failures. For Communication and other services, uh, the uh, company uh, or uh, the uh, provider 
uh, mostly the provider should take care of that. Uh, we have other utility services that can impact the organization as well uh, as the communication or the phone. Uh, among this is that, like we said, the telephone, the water, the waste uh, water, uh, the trash pickup, uh, cable television, uh, natural or propane gas, and custodial services. All these uh, could be like communication uh, areas or communication services that's needed for the organization to run properly. The threat of loss of these services can lead to the uh, inability of the, of the organization to function properly. The third one is power irregularities. The threat of irregular power uh, from the utility company is common and can lead to fluctuations such as a power access, uh, power shortage, and power losses. In the United States, buildings are fed with 120 volts, 60 hertz uh, cycle power, uh, usually through uh, 15 and 20 amp circuits. Voltage level can spike uh, momentarily, uh, increase or surge, uh, prolonged increase. It can also sag momentarily. Uh, low voltage or uh, brownout, brownout prolonged drop. Uh, it can fault, which is momentary loss of power or blackout prolonged loss. Since sensitive electronic equipment, especially networking equipment, computers and computer-based system are uh, susceptible to fluctuations, controls can be applied to manage power quality and to make sure that these uh, irregularities can be controlled uh, by those uh, controls or by those uh, maybe search protector or battery backup or any other uh, tools that can be used to uh, support uh, uh, system power or system grid. One of the most common deliberate acts is espionage or trespass. This threat represents a well-known and broad category of electronic and human activities that uh, breach the confidentiality of information. When an unauthorized individual gains access to the information and organization is uh, trying to protect their uh, uh, information, that act is categorized as a deliberate act of espionage or trespass. When uh, someone employs techniques to gather information that crosses the threshold of what is legal and or ethical, uh, they enter the world of industrial espionage. Instances of shoulder surfing uh, occur at co uh, computer terminals, desks, desktop, or uh, ATM machines, uh, or in public phones, uh, public phone areas, or other places uh, where a person is uh, accessing confidential information are considered one of these uh, espionage uh, actions. Uh, the threat of trespass can lead to unauthorized uh, real or virtual actions that uh, enable information gatherer to enter premises or systems they have not been authorized to enter. Controls are sometimes implemented to mark the boundaries of the organization's virtual territory. These boundaries give notice to trespassers that they are in intruding the organization's cyberspace. The classic uh, per perpetrator of deliberate acts of uh, espionage or trespass is called hacker. In the gritty world of reality, a hacker uses his or her skills to attempt to bypass the controls placed around information that is the property of someone else. The hacker frequently spends long hours examining the types and uh, infrastructure or the structure of the targeted systems. There are generally two skills 
uh, levels among hackers. The first is the expert. And the expert hackers uh, can even develop uh, software scripts and codes exploit used by the second category, which is the novic or unskilled hackers. So even if they are not attacking themselves, actually with the code that they are writing, they are giving it to unexperienced hackers to do the same uh, thing, which is hacking uh, other systems. So the expert hacker is usually a master of uh, several programming languages, networking protocols, and operating systems, and also exhibits a mastery of the technical environment of the chosen targeted system. He knows that system. However, expert hackers have now be become bored with uh, directly attacking systems and have turned to uh, writing the software. The software they are writing are uh, automated exploits that allow Novik hackers to become uh, script kiddies. We, we call them script kiddies. And those are hackers of limited skill who use expert written software to exploit a system, but don't fully understand or appreciate the systems they hack. As a result of pre uh, preparation uh, and uh, continued uh, vigilance, attacks uh, conducted by scripts are usually uh, predictable and can be adequately defended against. There are other terms for system rule breakers. Beside hackers, we have also two other well-known terms. Uh, you you will hear or you will see in many places the term cracker, uh, which is now commonly associated with an individual who cracks or removes the software protection from an uh, application, an application designed to prevent unauthorized publication. The other term that you might hear or see is called uh, the freaker. Uh, which hacks the public telephone network to make free calls, uh, which disrupts the services and can cause a chaos. The second ca category that we were talking about is the natural disasters, the forces of nature that poses the most dangerous threats because they are unexpected and can occur with very little warning. These threats can uh, disrupt not only the lives of individuals, but also the sto storage, transmission, and use of information. This includes fire, floods, earthquake, lightning, landslides or mudslides, tornadoes or severe uh, windstorms, hurricanes or typhoons, tsunamis, uh, electrostatic discharge and dust uh, contaminations. Since it's not possible to avoid many of these threats, management must impl be implemented to control uh, or to limit the damage and also prepare contingency plans for uh, continuing operations. Another common deliberate ag action is the extortion uh, which happens uh, when an attacker or formerly trusted uh, insider steals information from a computer system and demands uh, compensation for its return or for an agreement to not disclose the information and most likely extortion happen uh, with uh, credit card numbers theft. Uh, another deliberate act, uh, we can say, now we are talking about deliberate acts, as, as you can see, and we can uh, talk about the uh, missing or inadequate or incompatible or incomplete organizational policy, which uh, makes an organization vulnerable to loss, damage, or disclosure of information assets when other threats lead to uh, attacks. Information security is at its core 
and uh, uh, it's a management function. So missing or inadequate or incomplete controls need to be put in place. Uh, those are what we call security safeguards uh, for the information assets uh, to protect uh, the information. So protection controls that are uh, missing or misconfigured or poorly designed or managed will lead to a loss in uh, the information and the data and will considered or uh, will be a threat to uh, a company or the company's system. Another popular deliberate act is the assault on the organization website. This category of threat involves the deliberate uh, sabotage of a computer system or business or act of vandalism to either destroy an asset or damage the image of an organization. These threats can range from petty vandalism by employees to uh, organized sabotage um, against the organization. Organizations frequently rely on their image to support the generation of revenue. Uh, so if an organization's website is uh, defaced, then that will affect the consumer confidence in the company and will reduce the organization's sales and net worth. At that point, consumers will not actually use their credit cards for that company because that company being breached or uh, uh, some of the information being leaked. Compared to website defacement, vandalism within a network is more malicious in intent and less public. Today, security experts are noticing a rise in another form of online vandalism in what are we uh, describe or what can be described as the hacktivist or uh, the cyber activist uh, operations. Uh, a more extreme version is referred to as uh, cyber terrorism. In general, the theft is the illegal taking of another property, uh, another's property or uh, service or information. Within an organization, that property can be physical, electron uh, electronic, or intellectual. Uh, all these can be considered as uh, items that can be uh, stolen uh, or can be uh, part of the theft. The value of information suffers when it's copied and taken away without the owner's knowledge. Phys physical theft can be controlled quite easily and a wide variety of measures can be used from simple locked doors to train security personnel and the installation of alarm system because that's physical but the electronic theft is more complex uh, problem and it's hard to manage and control organizations may not even know that it has occurred in the next session we will continue our discussion about other types of threats to the organization information system. So currently, we will we'll stop here and if you have any questions, uh, we can use uh, online communications channels uh, or face-to-face -face during office hours. That will be all for this session. Thank you and have a great day.